All right, hello everyone. It is uh, Wednesday. Yeah, it's Wednesday. Time is uh, 02.52, New York local time, 2 a.m. my time. Getting pretty tired, but NASDAQ's offering some opportunity here, and I'm trying to get to my top step trader profit target. We are short the NASDAQ. I'm not going to tell you where I took this entry because it was not good. There's no bueno. <laughs> But nevertheless, we are short. Um, so uh, Michael Huddleston teaches about daily profiles. Uh, one of the things is watching your 12 a.m. open here and then basically uh, accumulation. So this would be one of his concepts is AMD, accumulation manipulation distribution. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove these drawings. So these are accumulation, manipulation, and now we're distributing. Accumulation, manipulation, and now we're in distribution. We came up into this buy side inefficiency. Um, I wasn't expecting that. Um, but then again, it is it fits perfectly in with a bearish day profile. And I am, I am expecting that Wednesday, June 28th on the NASDAQ will be a, a, a red day. I think the color on the end of the day is going to be red. I will tell you what my regular trading hours target will be. It is significantly lower from where we are in electronic trading hours and that that would be um, down at down here. We are still inefficient on this regular trading hours gap. Um, not expecting that the NASDAQ is going to get all the way down here during the friggin London session electronic trading. But uh, all is possible under the sun, and we are inefficient down here, 14,893. I'm all the way back. Um, so looking at our you know, potential dealing range here, came all the way up to a premium rejection block and uh, rejected. So if that is our dealing range that we're working in, we got our regular trading hours here. Looking at this uh, dealing range, you could see we're, I mean, you know, there it was right there, premium uh, premium rejection block on the regular trading hours. So we are inefficient. We are inefficient down to 14,894. Let's get back to the trade. The London Stock Exchange is about to open. Um, I'm looking for, a sh I'm, at this point, you'll notice, um, I do not have a profit target. I don't have a stop loss in the market. I'm letting it. I'm letting it develop. I want to see. I want to see how this develops. I don't have a profit target because I'm not. You know, we are sell side inefficient here. We have sell side liquidity. We have uh, this CE of this wick down here. That that could be a target. It's just difficult for me to pick a sell side target, and I'm pretty firmly convicted that we are going to go lower. So, could get uh, London Stock Exchange opens in four minutes, could get um, another move higher and then lower. Pretty convicted that that was probably our high of the whole day, right there. Um, 15,074 and a quarter. Uh, it was probably for Wednesday, we'll see if this ends up being correct, but for Wednesday, June 28th, that right there was probably our high. Right there. 07425. It would make a lot of um, ICT sense, right? Accumulation, manipulation, distribution. Judas swing just above the New York 12 a.m. That would be our power of three concept, which played out into a buy side inefficiency. Just one of Michael's mini models. And this would essentially be coming into a sell model. So we're probably looking at a down day on the NASDAQ on Wednesday. And if I had to, you know, hasten a guess, coming all the way back to yellow box. Okay. I don't think we're coming back down here during London. It's possible, but, you know, you can see we are inefficient. You can see your buy side inefficiency here. Prices wick through it a number of times, but these things can be referenced multiple times. Okay, I'm watching this. 
We're buy side inefficient here. We're probably looking it up on the London Stock Exchange open. We're probably looking at it moving against me. A little bit of manipulation right on the London Stock Exchange open, then down is my current thinking. Coming into this wick inefficiency, let's see if that inverts. Buy side inefficiency here. Volume imbalance is higher, so we are inefficient up until 60 quarter. 60 quarter. Looks like it wants to invert the CE of that wick. Where the cursor is co could come up. We've got a bearish order. Excuse me, yeah, bearish order block. 62 quarters. Coming up into this one minute volume imbalance on the open. We are expecting an open volatility. I'm expecting a move higher than lower. So I am sitting in drawdown. Not an ideal scenario, but this is definitely not a trade idea that is invalid. Let's go down a three minute chart. Just took out our buy stops, in, traded into buy side inefficiency, took buy stops. I think that was probably our high of the whole day. We'll see if I'm proven very quickly wrong. Okay, I am expecting this to move against me for the next five minutes. This was not an optimal entry. I just am pretty convicted that we are going to move lower. Coming up into this bearish order block here, coming up to the 50% of that right there, it's the open of that first green candle. Price is ticking down. Okay, got the open coming up in 15 seconds. I have no, I have no take profits because I, I f I'm firmly convicted that we're going to drive lower. Okay, London Open. Increase in volatility here on the London Open. I'm going to close out our other instruments. Just fully have the price data here. Just the chart. Don't want to distract you with a bunch of numbers on the right. We need to be focused. Day trading is all about focus. I am a little bit autistic, so I just have the ability to compulsively focus on something. You might be a normal person and you have no ability to focus. I do. Well, sometimes. Um, okay, London Open. Got a little bit of a manipulation here. I'm now expecting us to shoot lower. Again, I'm looking at um, sell side liquidity here on the blue line. And then I'm looking at these sell side inefficiencies lower. Looking at the cons I'm looking at these wick inefficiencies. I'm really looking at this thing coming lower. Big time. Okay, I will put the eye on to draw your attention. There's the eye right there. There's our sell side liquidity 10 minute chart. All right, I want to draw your eyes down to the sell side liquidity. London session is a session where we're expecting uh, volume to come in. Not really volume, but we're expecting volatility to come in. And so we do expect order flow to come in. And this could be, you know, whereas Asian session is oftentimes going to consolidate and have a difficult time making new highs and lows, London, London can get very directional. So London will have no problem punching through lows like Asia does. I definitely should have um, taken profits on a, sh on a short that I took here at the consequent encroachment of this week during Asia because it was Asia. London can get very directional. So this would be the session that I'd want to see it just start punching through lows. You know, that's one thing that you got to be aware of is the session that you're trading. Uh, I uploaded a sh recording of me trading during the Asian session and I left a lot of open profits on the table 
And in hindsight, I should have been using these wicks as profit targets because it was Asia, and you really don't expect Asia to punch through highs and lows. Not usually. London, on the other hand, honestly probably the most directional session of the day, even over New York. I know that's hard to believe. It's my, you know, it's a very directional session. It can be, at least. So, if my direction is correct, we should be doing pretty well here. Yeah, displacement on the open, lower. Probably going to have a silver bullet right here. Okay. We're looking at the time between 3 and 4 o'clock. We have a displacement right on the open. We've got fair value gaps here. Price to trade into, then shoot lower. That would be a London silver bullet right there if you were trading that. And I expect that we're probably going to trade right there. Okay, silver bullet idea would be right about here. The models that I implemented to get short here was a mixture of you know inefficiency, liquidity, and then the market maker buy and sell profiles, looking at our 24-hour banking cycle. Assuming that that was probably our high of the whole day, the 24 hours right there, my current thinking. There we go. There was your London silver bullet. Now I'm expecting a drive into liquidity right about now. Go to our 10 minute chart. Really expecting to start to see this thing get directional. Let's watch our three minute chart. Two minute chart, one minute chart. Came up into this fair value gap we formed on the open. Would like to see it turn lower at this point. We have a buy side inefficiency. I'd like to see remain open right here. One minute chart. I'd like to see that remain open. There was your London silver bullet right there. Right there. I'd like to see the red box remain open. And a little bit of that, you know, I like to see that a little bit of manipulation just before the uh, London Open. That's a good sign for lower prices that we manipulated just a bit before the London Open. Okay, coming back up, I'd prefer to see red box stay open. It's not. Now let's see if red box can invert. You know, most ideal scenario is it stays open. But now we're coming up to it. I, the next idea that I want to see is I want to see it invert. So I want to see price reject it. And if it trades through it, I don't want to see it close above it. And if it closes above it, not good. Okay, three minute chart, 10 minute chart. 10 minute charts looking good. 5 minute chart. Looking good. 5 minute chart. Drawing your attention to this sell side liquidity. That is the first eye that I want you to look at. We have an order block down here as well. 15 minute chart, you don't see it. 10 minute chart, you see it. Okay tell you what the target is for this trade. Three contracts. Right there. Let the last one go. Right there. This is the aim. Okay, like to see the red box invert 
act as resistance. I do not want to see price trade through it, invert it to go higher. Opposite of what I want to see. I want to see it act as resistance right now. I'm not saying that will happen, I'm saying that's what I want to see. This is also a one minute balance, balance price range, which is a very strong uh, resistance. Okay, there we go. Want to see our trading algorithms initiate a sell model. Okay, one minute chart. Want to see it initiate a sell model. Leaving part of that inefficiency open right on the London Open is a great sign for lower prices. Five minute chart. You can see that our eye of Ra is down here. And I might uh, start to peel off contracts if we get down below the sell side. My ultimate target would be down here. Okay. Sell side, liquidity is the first target, but then also this volume imbalance down here. Go to our 10 minute chart, that is a wick inefficiency. Go to our five minute chart, that is a volume imbalance. Go to our regular trading hours and we are inefficient down way lower. 14,895, we are inefficient down here. So lots of draws lower. Plenty of reason to believe this thing should come lower. And this is London session, so we can get directional now. Let's check out our dollar index. I want to see the dollar index moving higher. And it was, but it's not right now, which is unfortunate. Dollar index coming up to a volume imbalance. I'd like to see that invert right here. I'd like to see the red. I'll make this a different box. Green box. I'd like to see the green box invert. Dollar index to move higher. I'm gonna get rid of this. Did deliver into our buy side target. New week opening gap uh, on the dollar index is sitting higher, and it could be a draw on price. I'd like to see that green box be respected. NASDAQ, one minute chart. Want to see the red box be respected. Coming back up to red box, putting me at break even, gonna take me in a drawdown. Wanna see the red box be respected, don't wanna see it trade up and through the red box. We did have a London silver bullet idea at the red box, right there, at uh, 306. That would have been a London silver bullet. It is in the, we are in the right time frame for that. And those are usually pretty pretty high accuracy trades. So I have reason to believe that this should move lower. The only thing preventing us from moving lower is the dollar index was was uh, moving lower. I want to see the dollar index move higher. I want to see this green box on the dollar index be respected. I want to see it move up from green box. So we are seeing some support on green box. Don't want to see it punch through it. Back to the NASDAQ. We're way up in red box now. I 
Yeah, this is not what I wanted to see. Wanted to see the, the London session get directional. Coming up into these volume imbalances here and here. Would prefer not to see a close above red box, two minute chart. But we are inefficient here, green box, and this, I'll make that one yellow. So green box is inefficient, yellow box is inefficient, so it could reject off of either green box or yellow box. Also CE of this wick. Trade up in a green box. Would prefer to see that. Mm, not good. Not good at all. Check out our 10 minute chart. Coming back up to the New York uh, 12 a.m. open. Up to this rejection block. Saw an initial move lower on the London session and now coming up higher. Alright, last stand is going to be at the green box. Um, that is where my stop is going to go. It's just above that high. My last idea that this could reject and go lower is green box. Fifteen minutes in a London session, we're not looking good. My last sort of idea of it rejecting is that green box. Coming back above New York, open 12 a.m. That's very difficult price action. minute chart got one a one one minute candle rejection on green box <clears throat> this
This right here is a one minute uh, balance price range. And that is a very strong deterrent to price. Well, it's a strong place to reject. Second one minute close is, is good. That's a good close below the green box. Good close. Taking out our little balance price range here in the quarters. 50% of that. 70 evens. We see we have not closed above that 50% balance, little balance price range here. Have not closed above that. Okay. Rejection would be good here. Take a look at our three minute chart, two minute chart. Algorithm is not making it easy for me. Making it very, very tough to read. Not impossible, but difficult. Okay, green box was a good spot to reject. I would like to see continued movement lower. London silver bullet on that one minute, uh, one minute idea, you would have your stop at about you know same spot that I have mine right now. So pretty much the same trade idea. You would be holding drawdown right now, a lot of it. But that was a London silver bullet. No doubt about it. It's a displacement that happened just prior to the setup time. Take it short right as it comes back into it. That was a London Silver Bullet. Do they all work? No. But but uh, Michael would tell you to put your stop right about where I have mine. See that we are... This is what our 10 minute chart looks like. currently trading efficiently. Okay, one minute chart. At some point I need to sleep. So, how long I'm going to go, I don't know. Obviously, I have to watch this uh, this position. Got to watch it. Got a oh, got another touch. Got another trade back into green box. Good reaction. Good reaction off green box. Got a lot of good closes below green box now, which is a uh, good, good sign. Leaving a part of that inefficiency up there and this volume imbalance, leaving that open would be a good sign for uh, lower prices. Okay, green box is respected on the five minute, green box is respected on the four minute, on the two minute, and on the one minute. About to get another good close below green box. Okay, I've closed. Let's see, we got a five minute close below the green box. That's good, good, very good. You know, timing these things perfectly is, is superhuman. I mean, it's not superhuman, it's difficult. It's difficult. Obviously, you know, I didn't know that price was going to go all the way back up to green box. I thought it was going to turn lower right on the open. It did not. But there's, um, 
if it does respect green box like this and this is London session it's probably our high for the whole day that high is probably uh, the high for the whole day on Wednesday it's 15,074.25 looking like um, that is probably going to be the high for the 24 hour cycle I had to hasten a guess That's that would be it right there If price is not making it making it easy for me. Check out our dollar index. Yeah, there you go. You see why the Nasdaq had its little pop up there. It is king dollar action right now. Green box was disrespected. Let's see if this green box is respected. like to see current green box get respected on the dollar index coming down into a bullish order block bullish volume imbalance here volume imbalance and efficiency like to see current green current green box be respected let's go back to the Nasdaq NASDAQ is, is very strongly correlated with the dollar index right now. You see the dollar index has the slightest reaction up and the dollar index and the NASDAQ is going down. So at this very point in time at which I'm, I'm speaking to you, there is a very strong correlation between the dollar index and the NASDAQ. Is that always the case? No. But right now it definitely is. 100%. So every time that the dollar index is trying to find this support, the NASDAQ will turn lower. So very strong correlation right there, right now. If we breach this London open low, I'm almost certain that that's probably the high of the day. The whole day like through regular trading hours too. Not certain, but a, a very strong idea. But it's not making it easy on me. This thing could end up um, moving very slowly during London and then shooting lower on a large impulse. I'm, I'm going to pull this limit. I really want to see price develop. If it's going to spend hours and hours and hours here trading efficiently and then move lower, that could be a very big move. And I don't want to limit my profit on that. That would be my current thinking. I'm still thinking lower. I'm still thinking lower. I want to get my account up to 157.938. As you can see, we got a lot of work to get there. Going to go. Uh, all right, we're coming right back up to green box, which is not what I wanted to see. If it punches through, closes above green box, then aye, aye. we're probably looking way higher. So very difficult for me to say what price wants to do right now. I, I will just say that I'm, I am, you know, obviously bearish. Could I remove the fib? We're coming right back up to green box. All right, let's see how the dollar index is doing. I want to see the dollar index moving higher. It is good. Respected the green box. Should should be sending the Nasdaq lower. 
It is not. Coming right back up to green box. Reclaiming this balance price range. Reclaim balance price range. Really want to see. I do not want to see it close above and invert that. That would be bad. Would not be good. Really want to see that our Frankfurt high here is is respected. We're up in green box. We're up at the seventy five percent of that. Want to see it close below green box? That's what I want to see. Not like what I'm seeing at all. Okay, we just traded above green box. One minute chart. I want to see. Oh, we closed. Yeah, we filled that balance price range. I want to see a one minute close below green box. Again, for the second time. We're, we're reclaiming the green box. Reclaimed balance price range. Reclaimed, reclaimed SIBI. So we're reclaiming that inefficiency there. That's a reclaimed balance price range or reclaimed SIBI. Either way you want to look at that. Traded up there now multiple times. We are rebalancing it. Decent close. No. Uh -uh, this is this is going to stop me out. I want to see 50% of this 30 minute SIBI get respected. We just ran Frankfurt's high internal liquidity. currently trading above the New York open 12 a.m. high 12 a.m. price coming to an optimal trade entry one hour chart is the same concept really don't want to see it close above 76 25 
This is not the kind of price action that if I were bullish, I would feel very confident about. Is this good trading what I'm doing right now? No, it is not. This is not good trading. Uh, but this price action is very difficult to read. Uh, I have every reason to believe that this thing is going to come lower. So, I'm going on my Apex account. Um, I'm going on my Apex account. And I'm tossing in shorts on this. Yeah, I'm I'm short four on my apex uh, at sixty eight evens, apex evaluation. Really wanted to get get it above the you know, but that didn't happen. But we're short on the apex sixty. 68 evens. I'm not even going to watch that. I'm not interested in watching that. I'm just watching this. But I went short on the NASDAQ on my Apex account, higher than the short that you see here on my Top Step account. I am not convicted. I, I just, I, okay, let me put it this way. I am convicted that this thing wants to come lower. I just don't see the case that this wants to pop higher. And uh, I was willing to risk my daily loss limit on that. Still am willing to risk my daily loss limit on that. I don't see it. I don't see why this thing shouldn't come lower. I'm not seeing it. We just got, we're going to get a 30 minute close. Let's see, 15 minute close, 10 minute. Let's see, 5 minute. Got a 5 minute close below 50% of this uh, SIBI. Sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. We're coming back through the green box, which is good. Green box is this balance price range. We punch through that. We that might be our daily high right there. London London session. For the whole day. Could be it right there. And look at this hourly chart. Look at how much room there is. Look at all this sell side inefficient price action down here. Why would price not come back through and roll through this sell side inefficient price action? It should. It should do that. So I'm short on the apex at 68 even so I'm on draw down there as well okay we're back in this one minute balance price range we're just sitting in it like to see that balance price range one minute chart uh, get inverted also have this one minute SIBI that we just formed. I would like to see price respect that. Going to remove the green box here. I'm going to change it to right there. Put that as red box. There was our SIBI right there. We just closed below one minute structure. I don't want to hit my daily loss limit on this, but uh, sometimes it is what it is. This has been very difficult price action for me to read, I'm not going to lie to you, 
but coming up to our higher time frame chart and applying the same thing I've been showing you over and over again on the one minute chart take our buy side or sorry sell side inefficiency we draw it out into quarters we see how price is acting around that 50 percent we saw that price respected it it should come lower now did I have any inclination from what I was seeing that it was going to punch back up to that 30 minute level I guess so I guess I did I probably got a little bit too wedded to just this spot probably should have taken a small loss on this and tried to get short higher as you know we're finding my trading I am usually early on my trades I'm usually seeing what price is about to do about you know 30 minutes an hour early whatever uh, so historically speaking I would be early on this short which I am by uh, you know a while one hour chart 15 minute chart you can see that we came up into this 15 minute SIBI and SIBI then 30 minute SIBI there's just one closed I think we are going to get a close below the 50 percent looks like it is respecting the 50 percent and then one let's go back straight to our one minute red box Redbox is balance price range SIBI right here. Now I'd like to see the red box remain open. Red box remaining open would be good. You know, it would have made sense in terms of our daily profiles for this to be the high of the day and it also would make sense for this to be the high of the whole 24 hour day both of those work into Michael's cell models they're both in the London session okay let's see one minute chart let's see it's coming up to red box I'd like to see red box remain at least partially open. That would be ideal. Ideal if part of red box remains open. Okay, we got one tick of red box that is still open. No ticks of red box that is open. Would like to see it still form resistance. Like to see price trade below it now. We did not close, did not fully fill red box on the close on that one minute candle. Respected the 50% of it on that one minute candle, which is a good sign. Not a good sign. It is not wanting to make it easy on me. Rejection block is coming up. 30 minute, 50 percent of that 30 minute SIBI is coming up. One minute close above that red box I did not want to see. Coming up on rejection block. We're in a volume imbalance. Trading above that red box. Red box is a SIBI. What you're looking at would be a model 2022 if it worked. Trading up to the 50% of that green candle.
Coming up on rejection block. This would be a model 2022. Stops taken. Displacement, fair value gap. Trade back into it. Shoot for liquidity. This is a one minute model 2022. You are looking at it. Do all the model 2022s work? No, they do not. But this is one. We pretty definitively closed below the one minute low that took us to this one minute high. That is, there's no doubt about that. So, this is a model 2022. We did have buy stops taken. We did have displacement. And it is not wanting to cooperate with me right now. Risking my daily loss limit on this. Probably shouldn't. Going to anyways. Trading up rejection block. Okay, decent reaction on the rejection block. Coming back down to red box. Want to see close below 50% of red box. A close at 50% of red box is not terrible. Want to see it close below red box. Good reaction off that rejection block. Model 2022 is still in play. I just call it Model 22. Model 22 is in play. That is buy stops taken. Displacement below the low that took you to the high. Forms a fair value gap. Trade back into it. Very similar to an optimal, optimal trade entry. Very similar. Coming back to our New York Open 12 AM price. This would also work into an accumulation manipulation distribution power of three if we traded lower. I see all of Michael's models are pointing me lower. That's all I can tell you. AMD, power of three points you lower. Inefficiency points you lower. Liquidity points you lower. It all points you lower. And if you think that it doesn't, then you haven't studied as much of Michael's work as I have. Because I promise you, it all points you lower. Okay, good displacement to the downside. Model 2022 uh, is looking good. Redbox was... We've closed a few candles below now red box. That's good. Let's change the red box to this volume imbalance. I'd like to see that stay open. My apex short at 68 evens is now in profit. That is not on this screen. Okay, new red box. Would like to see the new red box stay open. It's not going to. Coming back into it. can't get a breakaway gap for my life okay did get a lower high I cannot get a breakaway gap to save my soul all a man wants in his life is a breakaway gap and I just can't get it I can't get this damn thing to turn just wants to sit up here and not turn Everything's telling me that it should turn. But I can't get a breakaway gap for my life. Just wants to come and re deliver every inefficiency that it makes. Let's trade right back through that inefficiency. Want to see it respected as resistance? 
can't get a breakaway gap for my soul. Just hate this price action right now. Everything's telling me this thing should go lower. I'm not seeing it. Oh man, I might have to take a break from the screen. Go turn on night mode. I cannot get a breakaway gap for my life. It's really all I want for Christmas is a breakaway gap. And I just can't get it. Just wants to efficiently trade my soul away. Terrible. Okay, we just uh, traded right back through that volume imbalance. No problem. Doesn't want to respect it. We have a one minute wick inefficiency we're coming up on. Okay, wick inefficiency. Right there, 50%. Reaction. Immediate reaction off that. Coming back down to that volume imbalance. Don't want to see it invert. Here we are, volume imbalance. Let's see if it inverts or trades through it. I want to see it trade right through it. Uh, it's kind of inverting it, which is no bueno. All right, 10 minutes to the top of the hour. Okay, trading back through that volume imbalance. Now let's see if we can get it to invert back on the good side. I need a breakaway gap is what I need. I need an inefficiency to form, a breakaway inefficiency, breakaway gap, and I need it to stay open. That is what I need. Then I will feel a lot better. If I don't get that breakaway inefficiency, I'm just sad. Okay, uh, displacement lower. Just had it. Didn't break structure though. Uh, is it going to immediate rebalance? Is that what we're looking at? Just immediate rebalance it. Just continue to frustrate me. Is that what it wants to do to me? All right, new red box. Red box is going to be here. Want to see that remain open? Right there. Do not want to see that. Trade it back into. Want to see it break away and just displace lower. What I want to see. Do not want to see it come back up to red box. I want to see one of these inefficiencies stay open. Oh, I'm looking at a one minute chart, by the way, so. Is that really too much to ask for is one? Can I get one inefficiency to stay open? That's all I want. No? Well, maybe that's the one. Coming right up on our 4 a.m. New York local time. That might be the one. Breaking structure. That's good. Want to see it close? We're coming up in a balance, one minute balance price range. It is reacting off that. It is reacting off the one minute balance price range. Now I have plenty of price action that is higher, which should uh, provide some. There we go. Now we're getting displacement. That's good. That's good. That's bueno. That's muy bueno. At the очень хорошо, друзья. Очень хорошо. Я бы сказал, что это очень хорошо, по-моему. It's good. It's all good. That's the thing we're seeing.
Das ist das, was wir sehen wollen. Это то, что мы хотим видеть. Es que, es que lo, es que lo, que lo nosotros queremos mirar. That's what we want to see right there. I want to see that inefficiency red box stay open. I want to see red box stay open. Do not want to see it come back to red box. It's going to be very sad if it comes back to red box. I want to see uh, 15,007. What is that? 7750, I want that to be the high of the whole 24 hour day. Right there, 24 hour high. That would be uh, in line with Michael's accumulation, manipulation, distribution power of three models. This is a model 2022 here. It's difficult to see, it is there. It's buy stops taken, displacement, trade back into it. Uh, displacement that breaks structure. We had that here, right here where the cursor is. We had model 2022 right there. After the buy stops were taken, now your algorithm should want to come in, offset, distribute. Everything that Michael has taught tells me this thing is going to come lower. And I firmly believe that his shit ain't, like, his shit is good. I don't know what to tell you. I think it's good. I think it works. And. It's all telling me this thing should come lower. I, I can't even make the case to you that it wants to go higher at this point. 30 minute chart. We're back on it. We respected this buy side inefficiency. Closed. We're closing below the 25% of this SIBI. That is a very good sign. Traded up to the 50% of it immediate rejection off that. Let's see if that's plus spread. Three tick spread. That's basically like plus spread. That's a very high accuracy right there at that 50%. If you include a three tick spread, our high here comes in at 77.50. The 50% of that was 76.25. Three tick spread would be 77. That's two ticks. All right, that's, that's pretty fucking accurate. That would be great. So if you include the spread here, we were two ticks off. Coming up on the new hour. Don't want to see it come back up to red box. Really want to see red box remain open. Forming a one minute balance price range. Right now. Balance price range on the wrong side. Four minutes to the new hour. Через четыре минут будет новый час. Это диапазон балансирован. Туда, где мы Прямо сейчас находимся. Yeah, I want to see red box remain open. This is very difficult price action. Don't know what else to tell you. Very difficult. Michael has talked about time distortion. I believe that this is an example of time distortion, even though he is not fully. Uh, come out with that concept and release it to the public. I believe that what we are looking at is time distortion. I believe. You know, doing, basically doing what you expect it would, but just very slowly. And with lots of pain. 
Okay, we are short on my Apex account. My other prop firm account is short at 68. I took that for four contracts as well. And I'm probably just going to hold that sucker for a long time. Below New York open low. New York open, 12 a.m. We're below that. I don't know what to tell you folks. Day trading is hard. Get used to it. Right, I'm back. Oh, it wants to go back to Redbox. God damn it. Yeah, it's going back to Redbox. Son of a bitch. Okay, we're back in Redbox. Want to say it respected. We're following the we're following this fucking trading idea now. I'm frustrated now. Now my revenge is holding on to this bitch. I don't know what to tell you. Oh, we did leave a part of that red box open. All a man wants in his life is a breakaway gap, and that might be it. We we'll see that red box remain open. There it is. That's what we wanted to see. This was a real bitch to sit through. But I am feeling a little bit better about it right now. I'll tell you that.
Want to see that red box remain open? Don't want to see it come back to red box. Red box represents a breakaway gap. It's a breakaway SIBI. And it's a strong sign that price wants to displace lower if it remains open. Coming into this busy one minute chart. Check out our five minute chart. Here we go. На юг, друзья, на на юг, товарищи, пойдем на юг. На юг, на юг, товарищи, мы пойдем на юг. Очевидно сейчас, да? Было ли это очевидно ранее? Об этом не знаю. Um, the amount of liquidity that is that would have now built up lower is is going to be immense. So at this point the the eye is almost inevitable. I'm going to going to put the eye at like 78%. But at this point we're talking we're talking yellow box. Not in the overnight session, I would say. But the amount of liquidity now that that would have built up to the sell side would be quite immense. So, yet again, I don't need bookmap to see that. Once price gets out of this bullshit, it's uh, it's shooting lower. It's going to shoot lower fast too, by the way. If we can get there, want to see red box remain open. I believe that this is an example of time distortion, although that is not a concept that Michael has released. And I don't think that Michael watches my videos, doesn't even know that I exist. So I highly doubt he's going to tell me whether this is time distortion or not. But the amount of pain that I'm feeling holding on to this short with all of his models saying that this should go lower, <laughs> I believe that this is time distortion. There's not one of his models that would tell you that this should go higher. Power of three tells you this is going lower. Just a basic inefficiency and liquidity. So just using our 30 minute SIBI here, drawing it out into quarters, that tells you it's going lower. Liquidity tells you it's going lower. All right. Regular trading hours also tells you that we are inefficient from Wednesday's regular trading hours gap. There's really nothing here that would tell you that this is going higher. Also, premium discount. Uh, not always the concept that I use the most, but as you can see, we came up into this premium rejection block, rejected it, and now we should be coming back down to discount. So whether it's power of three, premium discount, everything is telling you this thing should go lower. Now I'll tell you. And I know them all. I know Model 2022, I know Silver Bullet. I know power of three. I'm very well studied in my ICT. Uh, a time distortion is not a concept that he has come out with publicly, but I believe that he will. And, I, and when he, believe me, I will be the first one to buy his book when it comes out. I want to see red box remain open. I'm cooking rice right now, so. Yeah, power of three is telling you this is going lower. Inefficiency and liquidity is telling you that this is going lower. Um, premium discount. Okay, sitting up in a, let's see if we're still in premium, where discount would be. Okay, I will tell you where I'm aiming for three contracts off. I'm aiming for right at equilibrium. I use my premium discount concept right there. Okay. There's premium discount in action. Be a very difficult 56 points.
if you're hearing a loud fan sound, I'm sorry, it's a vent. I highly doubt anyone on this earth is watching this video to this point. Okay, why am I taking three contracts off at um, 003? That is equilibrium of our dealing range. Yeah, that is equilibrium of our dealing range, 30 minute chart. So I'm gonna take off three there, go to my Apex account, gonna take off three there as well. Now this bitch has made me mad. Bitches made me really mad. All right, we're coming back. Oh, oh, three is equilibrium of our current 30 minute dealing range. It is therefore my target for three contracts. This bitch has made me mad. Not happy with my performance on this. Not happy with how difficult the one minute price action has been. But um, sticking with it. And if you're still using a bunch of indicators and other bullshit on your chart, you know, good luck to you. One day you'll wake up. Or you won't, you'll lose all your money. That's okay too. Either way, I'm not putting a volume profile on my chart, so stop asking. It's not happening. I'm not putting your fucking volume profile or your book map or your other garbage on my chart. I'm just not. And uh, if it works for you, that's fine. If you trade options, I got a guy messaging me like every day now. How much money he's made in options. I don't give a fuck. This is what I want to do with my life. And so, you know, if I ever do get into options, it'll just be selling premium. That's it. I'm not interested in options. I'm interested in this. Although it can be difficult. Dollar index should be moving higher. Ay ay ay, green box. There it is. Yeah, still working that green box, huh? So the green box right there. Okay, still working green box. This was not my best performance uh, at all. It was a, it was a very suboptimal entry. I will admit that by a thousand miles. Want to see red box stay open? I'm trading another evaluation account for a prop firm called Apex. On that account, I went short at 68 evens.
Okay, I'm going to throw another uh, Michael Huddleston model at you, and that is power of three. One, two, three, high. One high, two high, three high. That is the Linda Raschke's and uh, ICT's power of three. One, two, three, power of three. It is there, my friends, if you look for it. One, two, three, power of three. I'm going to tell you all of the models right now that tell you that we should be going lower. Number one, 30 minute SIBI. Okay, 30 minute SIBI. We failed to close above the 25% on a 30 minute chart of our buy side inefficiency. That is model number one that's telling you this is going lower. Model number two, premium discount. Okay. It's going to be red Fibonacci. Traded into a deep premium. And we found resistance up here at premium rejection block. Premium will then seek discount. Equilibrium is my current target. That's 15,003. So premium discount model is telling you this should go lower. That is the next model. Power of three. One high, two high, three high. That is telling you that this should go lower. Inefficiency is telling us to go lower. Premium discounts is telling us to go lower. Let's talk about... Um, I'm sorry, this is three drives pattern. Three drives pattern. One drive, two drive, three drive. It's three drives pattern. Let's talk about um, market maker buy and sell models. Yeah, I'm there too. If, that, if that's the kind of stuff that you like, I'm there. When we have a very directional day, like I expect that we're going to have a pretty directional down day on, on the NASDAQ, oftentimes we're going to expect that our high is going to come in during the London session. We made a high, two highs, but we made the high here during the London session. We traded, let's talk about accumulation, manipulation, distribution, power of three. Okay. Accumulation, manipulation, distribution. Okay, again, accumulation, manipulation, distribution. Daily profiles, New York, open, 12 a.m., market maker sell model. You expect a... a some sort of a movement above the New York Open 12 a.m. price on a bearish day, which we got that. We got it during the London session, which is exactly what you expect from the market maker sell model. Okay, so there are a, there are a wide variety of Michael Huddleston models that, tell, that are telling you this should go lower. And I didn't need book map to see it. Fucking book map.
Oh, it still wants to piss me off, huh? Okay, we still want to pretend like we're not going to shoot lower. Okay. That really wants to make it difficult on me right now, huh? High resistance liquidity run, huh? Okay. I guess that's what it wants to do. It wants to make it difficult. Yeah, I, I mean, there's no point in even going below the going below the five minute right now. It's visible. It wants to make it very difficult on me. It's okay. We we persist. We persist. Really don't want to see it get back up to red box. Red box, I want to remain open. There's a very high resistance liquidity run. Which is unfortunate. These are the moments where if you don't know... I want to give you all a hint how I've been living the past two months. I live on nothing. I gotta make this happen right now. Or the dream is dead. So. It's been wake up. Study Michael Huddleston. Trade. Go to sleep. Wake up. Study Michael Huddleston. Go to sleep. Listen to some music. Wake up. Study. I got two notebooks full. And. Uh, still not there yet. It's hard, but it works. And I ain't looking to take fucking scalps no more. I'm looking to take out what I, can, I know I can take out of this marketplace. Even in these conditions, I, I know I can do it. This very much looks like a high resistance, high resistance liquidity run to me. My idea has not changed at all. That last five minute candle doesn't change my idea at all. I just took out buy stops. It's got no reason to go back up to buy stops. So I'm not getting shaken out on that. It's going to have to try harder to shake me out on that one. You know, I got a guy asking me whether I don't know if you want to make money trading. What a passive aggressive fucking comment. It's very Canadian. It saddens you. Well be sad, asshole. Be sad. I'll just let you frown. I like the guy. He's okay. I'm being a little harsh. I'm a little frustrated with what the market's doing right now. Dollar index. That's what I want to see it do. Respected green box. I mean, ideally, I'd like to see it come up and take out buy side liquidity. That'd be good. But uh, that would be a good sign, good price action for lower NASDAQ. 
mit seinem Berlin der Heilig war, lassen zu den Brüdern zeigen, lassen nach den Sternen greifen und sich so täglich ist, war, sagen wir, hat Vater war. I basically just listen to the same rotation of songs. Because that's what YouTube does. It feeds you into the same songs all the time. YouTube algorithm. I don't you watch this before. Do you want to watch it 30,000 times more? Guess so. I am a little bit autistic, so. I don't mind. There's going to be some of you that are going to watch this video. You're not going to understand a fucking word I'm saying. And you're going to think this was all random. And you're still going to think that I need to secretly switch on indicators. And what I'm about to say is going to be mean, and that's just because the market is frustrating me right now. Fuck off. I ain't putting your fucking indicators on my chart, and I'm not putting your fucking volume profile on my chart. Are we clear? I got a moving fucking averages. It's distracting. Bookmap is one of the most distracting tools I think that has ever been invented for day trading. I mean, it has 30,000 bubbles. It's constantly screaming at you. Are you kidding? That makes it like an arcade. That's a joke. It's my opinion. Bookmap, don't sue me. You're going to lose, by the way. It's my opinion. I think your software is a joke. I mean, really? 30,000 bubbles and screaming at you, iceberg order, iceberg order. Gives a fuck if it's an iceberg order. <laughs> it has nothing to do with what's driving the market. If it's an iceberg iceberg order or not, that's a joke. Your ladders are a joke. Depth of market's a joke. Waste of time. I mean it, and believe me, I have tried it. It's a joke. It's, gar it's hot garbage. And I like Trade by Mats a lot, but I think he could optimize his trading by getting rid of that volume profile bullshit. I really do. How are big fat fucking volume bars on the right side of your chart? I understand the idea, right? It's that the low volume liquidity nodes price should price should displace quickly through low volume nodes and it should find resistance or support at high volume nodes. You don't need the fucking volume profile to see that information. One day, I'm just going to tell you this. This will be the only way that people trade. This will become the new retail. It's too accurate. Maybe not, but maybe people will continue to believe that things work off of Gartley patterns. I don't know. But there will be a growing number of people that see that it's really inefficiencies and liquidity. It's, it's session times. It's intermarket relationships, which, by the way, looking at your dollar index and looking at risk assets versus dollar, that is not a new concept. A lot of what Michael teaches is not new, but it is refined, and it is, and it is given to the public, whereas, you know, was not really publicly available before. And it's a shame that so many people spend so much time focusing on, on him and his personality. He says he's bipolar, y'all. And I can tell you that this market probably will drive me insane as well. Okay. Really becoming good at day trading, you're probably going insane doing it. I don't know how else to tell you. Um, these guys are warrior trading, Brave Forex Academy, Jigsaw. I think it's all a joke. my opinion and I think that the Axia Futures guys not sure how much of that is real and if they are profitable I don't think they're optimized 
I'm not optimized yet either. The, watching this, this is distracting. Okay, this the right side of my chart here at the depth of market. What the fuck is that telling you? I'm sorry, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I have tried it. You're all gonna think that I have not. You're all going to think that I have not tried it, which is false. I have. But Reese, have you used this? Yeah, I have. The only reason I found Michael Huddleston, Inner Circle Trader, is because what I was doing before it never worked, and I finally. I want to teach you a little bit something about something called empirical evidence. And I, and I mean this, by the way. I'm not trying to be facetious. Um, empirical evidence is evidence that is not driven by deductive or inductive logic. So there's two pure forms of logic, and that is inductive and deductive logic. So a series of propositions uh, derived from a, like a a bigger proposition and then broken down that's deductive logic and then building up multiple propositions um, is inductive logic that's not what empirical empiric logic is empiric empiric evidence is not exactly knowing why something is true or not it's just an observable phenomenon I empirically know that the bullshit that you're using doesn't work because of my own repeated trials and failures. And I'm a pretty smart guy. I'm not a rocket scientist and I'm not a mathematician, but I am pretty smart. If I cannot make chart patterns work, they probably just don't work. And if I cannot make the DOM work, they pro it probably doesn't just, it just doesn't really work. And if I can't make the depth of market work, it probably really doesn't work that well. I don't know what to tell you. Um, there's a reason why a lot of the guys brave Forex Academy and a lot of your Telegram Forex hustlers there's a reason why they're Forex hustlers and it's because they can't really trade so they need to sell their courses I'm not against hustling at all I'm really not and um, you know you go, you go watch these guys they all look real professional right with a bunch of indicators on their screen, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. It's not. It's, it's bullshit. I don't want to tell you. It, it's good looking bullshit. It's still bullshit. All right. Need to check what my daily profit limit is. We're looking for one fifty-seven. Got a ways to go. Got another twelve hundred. I want to see that hit three um, k. Fifteen more points. That's fine. That's the goal right there. That is my uh, profit limit.
So as I was saying, am I the smartest guy out there? I'm not the smartest man out there. But I have an IQ of about 136. I'm about top 3%. And what that means is that of the general population, I have an uh, equal to or higher general intelligence than um, about 97 out of 100 people. Um, and if I cannot make your shit work, you, you can't either. Um, okay, coming lower. I was tested as a child. My general intelligence is just short of Mensa. Not there, but close. I speak three languages. I have a law degree. Spoke better Russian and German in the past. So I am not quite there at mathematician level. I am a advanced attorney, advanced professional. I'm not quite there up at um, physicist. But I am right up there at about advanced academic. I'm not saying that to be arrogant. That is an accurate assessment of what my intelligence is. And so what I'm trying to tell you is that it is overwhelmingly likely that if I cannot make the systems that you're that you are trying to make work right now, if I cannot make them work, you probably can't. Okay? That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's hard facts. Um, and if you listen to a lot of people on Telegram, on Discord, uh, other places, and if they kind of sound stupid to you, it probably uh, there's probably a reason why. They're on a Telegram Forex hustling group in instead of trading for a living. Not necessarily. I mean, I like making these videos, and I, I want to video journal my own trading. And maybe one day I'll sell a course myself. I'm not against hustling at all. you got to make an income. But you have to be very wary. This is a dog-eat-dog -dog profession. This is a... Um, this, is an, this is a killer-be-killed profession. We this market is driven by computerized algorithms in my opinion and they don't give a fuck about you I don't give a fuck about you and neither does neither do these algorithms okay so the, the whole kumbaya and day trading is is not really gearing you for what it actually is it's a battle it's a war it's conflict sorry I'm not really sorry. I'm, I'm trying to tell you the truth. This is a very difficult endeavor. But it can be done. It's going to take a lot of work. And you have to have a certain raw level of intelligence. And if you don't, I don't recommend it. If you yourself know that you are not of a certain intelligence caliber, and I really don't know how else to say that, you should not try day trading. You don't need to be Mensa. You don't need to be a mathematician. Uh, but you do need to have a certain level. And just because I'm intelligent, by the way, doesn't mean that I have any amount of impulse control. I don't. Uh... I'm basically a gambling addict and it's taken an immense amount of work for me to control that to an extent. I'm not going to say it is control because it's not. Uh, raw intelligence does not always equate to good decision making. There's going to be many of you that just listened to the past five minutes and you're going to be extremely disinterested I'm trying to and and here's what I'm going to tell you political correctness is political correctness for a reason in the Soviet Union it was called politiska correctness and 
the truth is the truth and objective reality is objective reality. I mean, really, whether you agree with it or not. The reason why I moved away from the reason why I moved away from indicator trading chart patterns is not because I couldn't understand them. It's because they did not work. They did not work and they're never going to work. I'm never going back. And I'm not saying that. Is it possible? Probably. I don't think so, though. It's my opinion. I'm very opinionated on this. I think warrior trading is a joke. I think jigsaw is a joke. I think Axie is a joke. I like trades by Matt, but I don't think he makes his primary uh, income from trading. I think Trader Sumo is a joke. I think Brave Forex Academy and those fuckers are a joke. I think that most of the people that you listen to on Telegram, especially if they're into Forex, are a fat joke. I think that virtually all of the people that you see here are all jokes. This joke. This joke. Pretty much all of them jokes. I think that guy Vinny E. Mini, a farce. The thing about Trader Sumo is that I think that he did a very professional thing serving in the United States military. Serving in the United States military has nothing to do with your raw, inte raw intelligence and it has nothing to do with your, well, it kind of does, but it has nothing to do with your ability to analyze a price chart. And he leans on that. He leans on the fact that he was in the military. And it's a sign to me that he's leaning on an American's natural inclination to support the military and I do support the military and I am proud of him for having done and served in the United States military that has nothing to do with his um, prowess at the financial markets it doesn't just doesn't sorry um, trades by Matt good guy very good guy um, and I think he's probably a pretty decent day trader but I don't think he's making millions off day trading. I think that millions can be made. But I, I don't think he's hitting the, the big money day trading. I think he scrapes I think he makes a good living, probably a six figure living off of his affiliate marketing with Top Step and day trading. Uh, but I don't think it's I don't think it's the real big money. That's where I want to be is the real big money. Not the fake big money, the actual seven figures. And there's really only one way you can get there, and that's and it just an immense amount of work and a fundamental understanding of what these drives these markets. High precision and it, and refinement of your system over time. An immense amount of work and an immense amount of not listening to other people. An immense amount of discernment in the guru that you're listening to. All of those things, if you want to make the real big money and get there. And, you know, Trades by Matt typically sticks to just the open. I don't personally think that you can make the real big money in day trading if you're just sticking to the open. I, I, I think well, I guess I, should, I shouldn't I should say that. Mathematically speaking, if you are trading the open with a lot of contracts, I guess. The open is a very volatile thing. We live in an age of political correctness, and so uh, many of you are going to be of a politically correct persuasion, and you are going to very much dislike the things that I just said. They are all true, or they are, let me put it this way. They're not all, it's not, they're my opinions. We'll leave it at that.
anybody that you're watching on Telegram, Discord, TradingView, that makes it seem like this is easy. You need to run away from that. Sometimes it will be easy. Sometimes, sometimes you're just going to see it. You're going to be in sync with the market. It is sometimes, quote unquote, easy. Okay? Sometimes. Everything with day trading is a balance. The top-down analysis from looking, starting with the dollar index, to picking the right index, to picking the right time of the day, to picking the right number of contracts, to all of that. Sometimes you're, you're just going to click with the market and it is going to feel easy. Sometimes, like what you just witnessed in this live session, it's not going to be easy at fucking all. Okay? That's the truth. Sometimes it will be and sometimes it won't. It's currently working our sell side liquidity. And it takes an immense amount of work. And and basically everything that you learned about retail is you have to throw it away. It's it's not compatible. Sorry, it's not. Everything you learned about the markets is all wrong. It, it's not chart patterns, it's not fucking harmonics, the waves of Elliot, and it's not it's it's not Wyckoff, and it's none of that. It just isn't. Sometimes it can look like it, but it's not. Gan is dead, Dow is dead, Wyckoff is dead, their ideas are dead. These markets, in my opinion, are driven by computerized algorithms. They seek inefficiency and they seek liquidity, with inefficiency being the first. They operate on a time schedule. Three basic sessions, Asia, London, New York. Certain times of the day we expect, certain times of the day, certain times of the month, certain times of the year, we expect increases and decreases in volatility that are predictable. We expect increases in volatility on economic news releases, on the New York Open, London Open, even Tokyo Open. We expect increases in volatility at those times. Oftentimes we expect that prior to the New York Open, uh, we're going to get some sort of a quote-unquote fake move. That's called a Judas swing. That should be expected. It is real price action, but it's not the intended move of the day. So. All right, I'm going to let this thing retrace against me a little bit and watch it from there. I haven't really gotten to the I don't believe that this would be a spot where price would truly reverse. I would expect a uh, retracement here. At this point, I'm pretty determined to make it down to my buy limit. It's not really a logical place for it to make a full um, swing terminus. We have a lot of price action higher now. That should um, I mean, I, you know, one of the things is that you're going to think that I'm a mean person, and sometimes I am, yeah. I'm not trying to be mean to you. I might challenge your ideas, but I'm not trying to be mean to you. I don't give a fuck about you. What I'm trying to tell you is that, in my opinion, you are, you are trading up against automation. You're trading up against computerized algorithms. Uh, and they are very efficient at what they do. And so you got to get pretty fucking good to beat them, to trade with them, really. You're not trying to beat them. You're trying to trade with them. You're trying to be in harmony with the algorithm.
And it's a very difficult thing to do. They're tricky beasts. But the basic premise, the basic structure is this. It is intermarket relationships, it is inefficiency, and it is liquidity, with inefficiency being first. And that is the basic framework. Sometimes it will look like the ways of Elliot. Sometimes it will look like the cough of Y, the Y cough. Sometimes it will, uh, but it's not. I think the vast majority of people that you, you try and follow on Telegram, and I try to follow the same people, um, Telegram, Discord, Trading View, I think they're jokes. Another thing I need to rip on, if you're still trying to trade the news, you are a dinosaur. By the way, a lot of you have been learning from Michael, Inner Circle Trader ICT, and you're not going to you're not going to get there. Cuz you think it's like a like a pattern. It's a, it's like a chart pattern, it's not. It's a lot of things. And it's complex. I you know to tell you it is. There's a lot of things happening in the market at one time. The time of the day, intermarket ship, intermarket relations, the premium and discount, okay, inefficiencies and liquidity, inverting the inefficiencies. These are academic level concepts. They're collegiate level concepts, and you know, I see, I read stuff on Reddit, and it's like. Will SMC and IC can't even spell ICT concepts last forever? Like, bro, you're not gonna make it. I don't know what to tell you. If that's your, you can't even type correctly, and you ask a stupid fucking question. You're, it's not. This is not another chart pattern, folks. It's trying to understand the fundamentals of what drives algorithmic computerized markets. That's it. It's the whole shebang. It's the whole thing. It's the whole system. It's trying to understand an automated marketplace. And it's easy? No. Possible? Yes. Easy? No. Some of you are still wondering whether like this shit is going to go away because you know, the market's going to stop working like this because ICT talked about it. You really think all the dumbasses who watch this channel are are really going to change how the market works guys come on no no it's how the markets work inefficiencies liquidity intermarket relationships it's how it's how they work it's not going to change because a youtuber talked about it it's not going to change because i talked about it, it just won't it's not how it's not how it is
Some of you are going to get into this sort of trading and you're not going to get it. You're not going to pick a model and you're going to find it very difficult. And I'm sorry. Okay. Um, currently coming back into this SIBI. This is looking like it's going to be a high resistance liquidity run all the way down. Let's check our hourly. Okay, what is a high resistance liquidity run? High resistance liquidity liquidity run is a run to a predetermined target. So as you know, I believe that the markets are 100% automated driven by um, an algorithm, computerized, that the high and the low of the 24-hour banking cycle is set in advance. And then the, the algorithm just plays, plays out its programming. And a high resist resistance liquidity run is, is where you already, you know, it has a target in mind that it wants to look for. It could be down here. It has a target in mind that it that it's already got the low of the day all the way up until resettlement. It's already it already knows what price it wants to deliver, but it's going to do that with a lot of retracement. It's going to do that with a lot of pain on the way. That's a high resistance liquidity run. At this point, there's a significant amount of price structure that has been formed. And I have no reason to believe this thing should not continue lower. And so I'm going to stick with that conviction. We are currently trading into a sell side liquidity pool. We traded down to the I. Coming back up into a busy buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. Right in here. Very slowly. See if it's referencing the dollar index. Dollar index is looking good. Good. Want to see higher on the dollar index? Do you need to be hyper intelligent to do this? No, you don't. You need to have a certain level of intelligence. Um, but you need to have a lot of pattern recognition. Pa the pattern recognition, the visualization is key. So if you lack in the spatial reasoning department, it might be difficult for you. All right, we're coming back up into this SIBI here. Like to see how we treat. I'm gonna box it for you. Probably gonna make it a red box. Now we'll do yellow box. I want to see how it treats yellow box. Okay, we're in yellow box, and I want to see uh, how we trade yellow box. Trading is not kumbaya. It's not a kumbaya circle. It's not uh, friendliness. Uh, no one is interested in you making money in these markets. Sorry. The powers that be are not interested in you pulling out millions of dollars from these markets. They're just not. They're interested in you being a fucking slave to the system and paying your taxes. That's it. And they're interested in making the money, using their trading algorithms that you don't have. Uh, they are interested in making the money for themselves and, and taking loans on it and not paying taxes themselves. There are people who control this marketplace and they live lives that you will never know. 
It's just money is no object, just comes in. Because they are, they control the algorithm, so it just comes in. And so the money that that they see, it's not even, it's not even real. Their money is very important to me. It's very important to all of you. To the people that control the control these futures markets, it's nothing. It's just numbers on a screen. Numbers on a screen. They control the marketplace. They control the algorithm that delivers the price. And so it's just... Money's just nothing. And they're not interested in you breaking into that. And... Uh, can it be done? It can be done. Is it difficult? Yep, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be work. It's going to be time. It's going to be patience. It's going to be a high degree of precision. It's going to be frustration. It's going to be emotion. It's going to be doubt. It's going to be doubt. You're going to think it's not real. You're going to go back to your bullshit chart patterns and your volume profile. You're going to go back to what you've known before and what. TD Ameritrade and TradeStation and even TradingView, obviously, with its endless number of indi indicators. You're going to go back to it. You're going to think that the things that I'm telling you aren't real. And after, I don't know, for me it was about $50,000. For you, it might be less. After a certain amount of losing and a certain amount of pain, you're going to realize that the stuff that you're using doesn't work. And it's probably not because you're that stupid or didn't try hard enough. It's because it doesn't work. Sometimes it works. Kind of enough to keep you believing that it works. <laughs> kind of like a slot machine. The retail concepts that you use, the moving averages, chart patterns, news, fundamentals, they'll work enough. They'll work enough to make you think that they're real when they're really driving the marketplace. They'll work enough to make you think it, that they work. And if you have very sound money management, you can probably scrape out a decent living. I don't have a lot of money management. Not yet. And I want to be I want to know what actually drives the market. Okay. I want to be a freak. Not interested in 30% strike rate. I'm not. I'm not interested in that. Okay, coming up to yellow box. I talked to an older gentleman. And he said his swing system works about 30% of the time. I'm not interested in 30% of the time. I don't care how big his 30% trades are. I'm not interested in 30% work or strike rate. Just not. I'm really not. I think Al Brooks is a very well respected joker. A very well educated, well spoken joke. I think Trader Sumo is a very honorable farce. I think Vinny E. Mini is a Tennessee hick. I think Trades by Matt is a very friendly, very personable, mediocre. I think all of the fucking Forex people are clowns. If, if, if their name is FX, run away. I think Trader Tom on, on Telegram is okay. If he's got Forex in his Telegram name, he's a joke.
do eventually want to get sleep. It's hanging here making you, you know, making you slowly think, oh, is this support, quote unquote. It's not. I'm looking at this guy on Telegram. His name is Target FX 2.0. And he's got a quote unquote demand zone where uh, Yeah, right like right at the right spot, but you know, his zone is so huge it's kinda of pointless. It's kind of the problem with zones. You can have a little bit of a range. But in general, you need to get down to your targets and thoughts and, and entries need to be precise. A huge zone of 50 points is, is not going to get you to the promised land. I admit that his quote-unquote demand zone would, would be in the correct spot. I give him credit for that. Okay. Target FX on Telegram says, quote unquote, the demand zone is down here. And he's correctly identified that that is an area of inefficiency. But it's not precise enough. This is 974 down to 947. That's a huge range. And the problem with this BISI right here is that it's not really where a swing terminus should be. Swing terminus should be down here and where the lower yellow box is or our RTH inefficiency. That would be, in my opinion, more of a realistic swing terminus. You know, it coming down to this bissy here and then not coming into these weak inefficiencies would seem highly unlikely to me. Okay. So supply and demand zones, I think, are kind of silly. Sometimes, you know, it looks like supply and demand. It's not. And it's not the waves of Elliot. I will tell you that. I have more respect, and I think that supply and demand zones are more viable than the waves of Elliot. I will tell you that. If I, if I want to stay up through all of this. No matter how many times I say it, there will still be some of you that think I can be convinced to go back to volume profile or something. I assure you, I cannot. It looks like we're respecting the 25% of yellow box. This is my daily profit limit, by the way.
I believe. Should be. Alright, one minute chart. Came up to this one minute sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. Respected it. You can see the same concept here on our 10 minute chart. We were buy side inefficient here. Come and trade almost to the 50% of that. Close really at the bottom of it. So we can see that this uh, is dynamic support and resistance. We immediately find resistance on it. Let's go check our dollar index. Yeah, so we can see why the NASDAQ was having difficulty going lower at that moment in time. Dollar index continues to work this green box. I'm going to move a little bit higher. This green box right here. Okay. Dollar index is working green box. Probably looking at the dollar index, you know, my current opinion would it be probably consolidation on the day. I don't know. I don't really even do a daily profiling of the dollar index. Um, I just kind of look at what it's doing right now. And right now it's working that green box. And as long as it's just working that green box, NASDAQ can go lower. NASDAQ is our bearish leader. All right, so looks to me right now that the NASDAQ uh, is, is pending dollar. Okay, dollar is moving below the green box. And we're not really ideal.
Now, if you're wondering why I, I personally cannot live stream day trading anymore, reading um, the ICT public um, Discord. Got a question that came in. Hello, trader. I have, I have you are doing well. I have a question. So I know a lot of ICT traders tack, take entry on one minute time frame. But for me, since the one min's candles move very fast, I don't have enough time to put my SL and TP. So those who take entry on one minute TF, how do you take entry on one minute? Thank you in advance. Might seem like a reasonable question to you, but it's not. It's just if, if that's where you are, I can't handle it. Sorry. It's all the same. The answer to that question is it's all the same. It's all fractal. It's all the same. It doesn't matter what time frame you're looking at. It's all the same. The entry is on an inefficiency. The stop loss should not be at an inefficiency. And then you bring all of your other knowledge to bear. Target can be at liquidity or target can be at another inefficiency. That's it. That's the answer. But when a guy like that asks that question, that's that you know that answer that I just gave wouldn't even wouldn't you know he wouldn't understand at all what I'm what I'm saying. So you know if you're watching this stream, quote unquote stream, if you're watching this live trade and you're kind of still at that level, like which order block do I use? I can't help you. I mean I can help you, but I. I'm just not going to spend my time doing it because I need to make money myself. The best that I can do is, is provide you a recording here of, of what I'm doing live. I'm using the concepts that you're learning, using them in real time. Doesn't mean that you have to trade ICT exactly like how I'm doing it, but I'm showing you the framework. That's it. That's all I can do for you. I'm not going to spend three hours answering your questions. Or do I trade BTC? That's why I can't live stream this. Because I know that's where a lot of you and most of you are. It's just, do I trade BTC? Which fair value gap do I use? And I, I can't, can't help you. Just watch my, watch my live recordings like this. Watch the whole fucking thing. You'll see. I'm not saying that I'm a master of this yet by any means. I mean, you saw that my entry here was 20 points off. Okay. So, yeah, I have work to do myself. I want to be hyper accurate. But if you're still at just, you know, with these concepts, what is a fair value gap? I'm not going to spend three years of my life answering every what is a fair value gap. I can't do it. And if I live stream, it's going to be question hour all day. It's just going to be what is a fair value gap. You gotta go watch Michael Inner Circle Traders content for yourself. I can't do it for you.
All right. If you have managed to watch to this point of the stream, and almost certainly there's no one on this earth who's actually watched this whole thing, but I'm going to, you know, give you a little something something to reward you for your patience. <clears throat> if you're listening to me without watching the screen, it's time to turn on the screen. Time to look at the screen. Okay, um, what is a swing terminus? Okay, a swing terminus is the the terminus of your current dealing range. So it's it's the terminus where the market made a significant pivot. Um, it's dependent on the time frame that you're looking at, obviously, um, but it should be where price has made a significant pivot. I mean, like anything, a swing terminus is scalable to the time frame at which you're looking. So, take a look at the 30-minute time frame here, and it becomes pretty obvious that our swing terminus uh, was all the way down here. Monday, June the 3rd, it, you know, came in down at 14,853, right? That's our swing terminus on the downside, and then our swing terminus on the upside here was at uh, 15,139 and a quarter. Now, that's a 30-minute chart. Okay, so your dealing range should be taken from there. Come down a 15-minute chart, and we see when we're starting to have, you know, arguably more swing termini. So our last swing terminus to the upside was up at 15,077, spot 50. Now, using our ICT market maker buy models and sell models, um, we're looking for if we're going to have a bearish day, um, it's, it's likely that we're going to put the high end during the London session. Oh, where does that high come in? That high comes in at 03.30 New York local time. And what is that? It's a London session. Um, so that 15-minute terminus comes in at 077 spot 50. I'm still in the short trade because I don't believe that our swing terminus to the downside has been reached. So, and also because, well, yeah, I mean, that's basically it. I think this has more downside. So a retracement doesn't really become a swing terminus until you have verifiable price action that that is where the market really wanted to make a key pivot. Basically, that's a swing terminus as opposed to just a retracement. Retracement is really just a small counter move, a move that's moving slightly or somewhat against the primary direction between your two swing termini. And you now obviously these things are module, modular, so they work on the time frame that you're looking at. But your swing termini should be fairly obvious. You know, the market might, it might be a single high and a single low. Could be like here, for example, and I'm highlighting with the cursor where the swing terminus was really these three lows here, just this one low that came in at 036 spot 50. That was a five minute swing terminus right there. Okay? So, that is our swing terminus concept. That is your swing terminus concept. Now, how do we use the swing terminus concept? Again, like I've said, you pair it with the time of the day and you pair it with your other ICT concepts. These things work together in harmony. They work together in synchrony. Okay, This high came in during the London session. Why is that significant? Well, if we have a directional day, like, I expect this to be a directional down day. For the whole 24-hour banking cycle, I expect this to be a bearish day. Well, where do we want the high to come in during a predominantly bearish day? We want it to come in right where it came in, during a London session. That's Market Maker uh, Cell Model 101. So, 
came down and finally did break sell side with our eye of raw looking for lower dollar index ah good movement on the dollar index just been working this green box Reese what is the green box it's volume imbalance been reclaimed multiple times now what does it mean to be reclaimed tested multiple times Why do you look at the dollar index? Risk, you know, dollar, risk assets move loosely. They're inversely correlated, risk assets with the dollar. That's why. All of your questions answered. Do you trade BTC? No. Take a look at Bitcoin and see what it's doing. I guarantee you it's nothing. Fuck, it's nothing still. Shit. It's a whole lot of efficient trading all the time. Wow, look at that. All the candles overlapping. What the fuck would you want to trade this? Honestly. Why is it this? This is not fun. So anyways, the answer is still no. Looking to make seven more points. Getting close to the profit limit. Profit limit is I don't like this one minute uh, balance price range at all. All right, that's enough.
Okay, that's going to do it for this recording. Um, I still have work to do. Didn't make it to the profit limit. Um, I didn't like that it was forming this balanced price range here. Did not like that at all. watching how it reacts. Fifty percent. What's a balanced price range? It's it's this. It's it's up and down like this in a perfect little V. That's a balanced price range. I didn't like that price was forming it at all. Dollar index. Dollar index is still, you know, showing me what I'd want to see or lower. NASDAQ itself. this balance price range at all. Might get long. It has been very difficult price action all night, in my opinion. Fifty percent of this balance price range is getting long on it, if we can get to it. I'm tired, I do want to sleep, but that is a balanced price range right there. I cannot deny the balanced price range. Dollar index. Very efficient. 30 minute efficient. 15 minutes efficient. Wow. It's that. Green box. Watch the green box.
We're getting long. If we can get here. If not, we'll get short again. I'm back on my Apex account. I'll lower that to one contract because I want to sleep. Making money is making money. I don't know what's that. <laughs> You need a lot of pattern recognition for this. Immediately knew that was a balanced price range. That's just training and spatial reasoning. Also, very difficult $1,800. Willis Slater still here as natural gas. Bear Slater still the Australian dollar. One minute is very flat. Yeah. Silver? I'd be interested in a short silver up here. I'm pulling this. I don't like this. That's trying to get too cute. Dollar index. I want to see the dollar index moving higher which time frame did I find this green box on I don't know I'm gonna delete it hourly green box I gotta stay awake for another 15 minutes. And at that point, I'm probably just not gonna trade AM this morning. I might trade AM Silver Bullet. Yeah, I'll try and trade AM Silver Bullet. That's going to come in in a little bit more than four hours. Just wake up, get right on the computer. Okay, I'm going to my Apex account. I'm going and, you know, 
I'm looking for an entry that I can just hold. Hold short. With top step, I've got a profit limit here. I've got another 1K. Um, I need to make it to 157,938. I want to see how it handles the 50% of this. Initial reaction is good. Okay, one minute chart. Coming up on the new hour, 15 minutes. Initial reaction off that 50% is promising. One minute low here is going to be at uh, 032.50. Yeah. Okay, I want to see um, some price action below 032.50. Oh, I want to see any amount of displacement here, any separation in the candles. Dollar index is moving higher. Give the short a shot here. Reshort it. Okay. Apex, I'm going short one. This might be a loss. What, I, what is informing of this trade is the dollar index's current action. Current action on the dollar index it's going to start smothering our risk assets if it if it goes much higher This is balanced price range here. I'm just going to aim on these four contracts at the low. Or at the... Right there. Rejection block. Let's aim for that. That's pretty reasonable.
Apex I am short one. I'm gonna try and run one into all the way into basically the day. Just try and run one throughout the whole day on Apex. Okay, coming out of that fifty percent of that balance price range. C E of this balance price range here. It is providing support. Dollar index. 15 minutes or 10 minute hour dollar next on the hour is really looking quite like it wants to go higher we now have price action above the balance price range that might test uh, you know suppress the current price action it is going to find res uh, support right where it is I knew I expected that I'm really pushing this Ah, there's no point in upping the time frame. You see the same shit. It's all it's a balanced price range. It's it's finding support. Coming up on the new hour. see it finding this support on this balance price range really don't I'm gonna limit my loss High resistance liquidity run as hell. Does not want to move lower. I mean, okay, it does, but you know, with resistance, <laughs> with fight. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the exact same on the five minute. There's no point changing over the five minute. It's telling me the same thing.
Spin me right round, baby, right round. Correct baby, right round, round, round. You spin me right round, baby, right round. Like a record, baby, right round, round, round. All right, coming up on the new hour where I should be asleep by now, but the NASDAQ did not want to cooperate with that. NASDAQ has been very uncooperative this evening. And I've got to get there. No, let's just say I have to get there. So we tease what it is. All right. Yeah, we don't want to see that. We don't want to see that at all. It's no bueno. It's always better to be stopped out, really, than to really let it run against. You can always re-enter. It's better to take the loss and then re-enter than it is to. Um, All right, we're probably looking at higher now. Dollar index. God, dollar index is still moving up. I mean, I really don't see why the NASDAQ wouldn't want to turn down on this. 300. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it goes quickly, my friends. It goes quickly. All right, we'll move this up here. So I don't want to get stopped out on something stupid because the dollar index, dollar index is moving higher pretty definitively and it should start smothering things. Should start suppressing the NASDAQ's willing, willingness to go higher. I was early on the string. Coming up on the new hour. So yeah, yeah, I mean, look at the dollar. There it is. All of our Forex is turning red. Bonds are turning up. A little bit of a flight to the safety. Right now we're rotating into safety. And so I'd like to see the NASDAQ continue its move lower. It's not doing it. I might just cut this. Five minute chart. Let's check the five minute. It's not cooperating. <whistles> ah, that's painful. That's very painful. I mean, it really wants to give you a tough time to, to, to catch the, the wave.
I, you know, with the dollar index doing this, I'm still way by a short. It's just that it wants to give you a lot of um, resistance. It's been a very difficult living. I might put one on short and uh, leave it. That's very painful. I was in on this. I had that. Alright. I need to go to sleep, so I need to just get in a short with one contract and see if I can get it to run even though it's probably going to be a very suboptimal entry. Dollar index is still looking good. Regular trading hours. Yeah, inefficient down here. So we have a four hour chart looking very much like it wants to shoot lower on the four hour alright I need to sleep so I think what I'm gonna do is enter short one leave it efficiency here. Okay. Y'all are not going to like this stop. It is what it is.
Okay. That's the best I can do. Um, gonna leave you with an hourly view. I I was trying, you know, this does not want to cooperate. Uh, you know, as quickly as I want it to. Um, hourly view of the NASDAQ. We are um, inefficient here on our regular trading hours. You can see we have Tuesday's regular trading hours gap down here. We uh, look at our hourly chart. We are we are sell side inefficient all the way down. 30 minute chart. We've got this 30 minute order block here. I mean, we're really inefficient down here. So, I have every reason to believe that we're going to come in and just cover all of this. This is inefficient the whole way down. Okay, that's going to be it for this video. Bye.